Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Dear you senior citizen here, greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this a brand new day. Yay, it is Friday. Thumbs up for that. A good thing. Uh, the, not that it's Friday. That doesn't really matter to me. I mean, a day is a day. But it's you know, further life, continued metabolism. Life is motion. When you stop moving, you stop being alive. So, thumbs up. Good deal. And on that, I've reached a point where something's happening again with my lungs, always. But, even though the air quality says excellent when I check it for our area, yesterday it said the air quality was excellent as well. But when I went outside for my walkies, about two blocks out, it was getting hazy and foggy because of the junk and particulates in the air, so... Who knows what excellent really means. But, unfortunately, on top of all that, when I wake up now in the morning, I'm just... <laughs> and just wheezing like an accordion when I wake up in the morning. I think that's the Department of Redundancy Department speaking there. Sorry about that. I'm trying to repeat words and phrases and sentences. Do what you're best at, though. <clears throat> So it's been fun that way. Uh, I even took some, I didn't want to have middle of the night anxiety again, so last night I went and took some antihistamines and, well, they don't last forever, and I was in bed by like 11. You know, so 5.30, 6 and some hours later, you know. So, can't take those again for a while, or rebound effect, that'll help keep me awake, yay. Thumbs up for that. Still, though, life is life. Life is life. I forgot to check what the temperature was going to be like today, so hopefully not horrific. Hopefully. It was actually, it got warm-ish toward the end of the day yesterday, but most of the day was coolish. Thumbs up for that. Also, for a spider report, last night when I went into my downstairs bathroom, which I say my downstairs bathroom, my housemates have the master bathroom, master bathroom, master bedroom, for the, the place we rent, and they have their own bathroom. So, even though everybody uses the one downstairs, it's got a shower stall, so it's mine. But, <clears throat> I was doing stuff at the sink, and looking into the mirror, and I noticed this big black spot up in the corner. If the wall is here, and the toilet's here, then up here, there was this big black thing. And when I went and looked at it, it was a great big old wolf spider. Now, when I say great big old wolf spider, I mean it was a great big old wolf spider. From the middle of its body, which was, you know, big, not huge. It was like, you know, take two pencil erasers, stretch them out a little better, which makes it thinner, and that was its body. But its legs, which were curled, you know, because it had long legs. Each one of its long legs still went on about an inch. You know, two centimeters for those who, you know, use metric. But, and that was with them curled, so stretched out. It probably went side to side, three, four inches, just because of its legs. Tiny body in there. But I saw it up there, took a look, and went, gosh, I sure hope you've moved by morning time. And then this morning, came down, it was still there. I don't mind it being there. I don't mind it living. I mean, until it had gotten up there, it had been here and living anyway. I just didn't know it. So I just didn't want it hanging up above me. Spiders are usually pretty good about sticking to things, but I have seen and heard spiders fall off walls a lot. So I don't want to be sitting there and have it bonk and bounce off of my head because it fell. So I went and got a well, it was a long pole, and then I poked it until it freaked out enough that it dropped onto the floor, at which point I was happy. Sure, I couldn't see it anymore. Sure, I didn't know where it went. I mean, I had to go back down to the bathroom like 45 minutes later. I couldn't see it anymore. Where was it? Who knows? Out of sight? Out of mind? I like spiders. I've actually liked spiders my whole life. I think they're amazing. Just alien terrible beauty things. They're deadly and vicious. 
but they're cool. I've just been arachnophobic most of my life, and in the past couple of years, I've gone. So thumbs up. Yay. <laughs> A good thing. Past that went walkies, but it was getting late, and, and so it was just walkies. Didn't get much done yesterday past the things that I, you know, got done. I spent early part of the morning, you know, I start recording this vlog anywhere between 7 and 7.30. And from then that point on, I'm either editing or recording. And I got a whole bunch of that done, editing and rendering done by like 1 o'clock. And then 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I was basically done. But my battery was so, so empty. I did not get much done past that. I've been replaying the game Grim Dawn because it's an excellent Skinner t box type game. It's like a, it's a Diablo 2 except modern with even more quality of life features added and it's good, it's fun, it's, it's great to play. Been doing a lot of that. There's a ton of other things I want to play and do. But life is life, especially since I still want to write. And, of course, now to spend some more time talking about the bone-hurting juice world, which one day I'm going to have a name. <laughs> I was trying to think of a name that would have, you know, the B, H, and J in it, like, you know, like Barnhelm. But, I don't know. Still, though, I talked a bit about yesterday how Milliander, being one of the fungal ills, you know, and how they're connected to a network, but there are those that aren't really connected to the fungal network, and they have wanderlust, and so they go on adventuring. Scarbat, I've talked about a bit, about the things that he's done. One of the reasons that he adventures, and I try to backstory my characters quite a bit, is when he was younger, remember the, in the story here, he's pushing 90, with an average 120 life, life year life span, but unlike human beings, they stay hale and hearty until like, excuse me, 99.9% .9 of their life. And then that last year is just, things fall to hell fast. So, when he was younger, he would try going to a university in a, you know, larger city, closer to civiliza civilization, civilized areas. <clears throat> he spent about three, three years there before he realized that he was one of those people that he can't do that. He can't settle down. After he was there for a couple of years, he just got so antsy, so anxious. He just sold all the junk he had and signed on to a caravan and just went out, out to adventure. So he just goes out, does stuff until his antsiness is gone, and then comes back to civilization buys a place, starts accumulating things. Just because he couldn't do his, the full university thing, he has a strong appreciation and liking for academia and learning and knowledge. He collects books and then when he gets antsy again, he just donates it all to the church and then heads out. But it's not just normal antsiness that he has. He's one of those that you know how when human terms, you're reading about those people that they don't just go climb rocks. They're not just rock climbers. No, they don't use the ropes and pickaxes and you know, all those things. They climb their mountains by hand. A little bit of chopped dust and they climb with nothing else but their hands and all. Why? It's dangerous enough as it is. To do that is just insane, but a lot of people do it. And those people that bungee jump or do some insane things were one mistake and... Yeah, I had housemates back in the 1990s. They were skydiving for a while. We were close to Canada and so they skydove, skydove, skydived in Canada. One time they were going up there, you had to do the border crossing, they asked you what you do, they said, oh, we're going up to Skydive. I was like, oh, where? And I was like, this place, oh, is your, you know, your instructor this person? Because if it is, that person died. Skydiving accident. So they stopped skydiving. <sighs> People do that sort of stuff. 
Scarbat feels roughly the same way, except it being a different world, of course. He goes out and he does stuff where you don't have the threat of falling out of an airplane and maybe your chute doesn't open. No, there's the threat of uh, if you're not quick enough and fast enough or quiet enough, then you're just a warm meal in a, in a creature's belly. And one of the reasons that they are, in fact, in the area with this one shop that sells the bone hurting juice is they are shook, badly shook. They had all gone on to one of their standard adventures, but they're all getting older. And it was in a dark place. The three of them, no danger could be sensed. They were just careful, but relaxed. Weapons ready, but in their scabbards and such. And they're talking and trying to figure something out. And then suddenly, like that, this thing comes out of the darkness and Ilchenka slams hard into a rock wall that was 30 feet away and she don't move anymore. They don't even have time to see that. This thing is closest to Scarbat. As it's turning to look at him and starting to move toward him, he's trying to grab his weapon. But it's one of those situations where his hand, instead of like reach, grab, got it, is just like this up against the, the hilt of the sword. And he can't figure out why, why it's not coming up until he remembers, oh yeah, yeah, you got to grab. And he finally remembers how to use his hand properly because things went to hell so fast and he hasn't had a chance to even try to figure out what's going on. Finally, he gets that hold of it as it's running at him and he brings it up and with his noodly, panicked, numb fingers, it goes flying. And with him already off balance, he takes a plunge and he falls. And all he can do is stare upward. Because this thing has him straddled at the shoulders and its mouth is already open wide. It's been maybe a second and a half that's passed. And Scarbat's about to go in like the first of three big bites, and then he's gone. And Meliander, in his panic, just leaps at this thing, and in a whole lot of universes, using a many worlds hypothesis, Scarbat ends up dead. Men, most of them end up dead. All three of them. But when Miliander leaps and thrusts with his sword in panic, it hits through, slides along the base of the skull, up through the foramen magnum, which is the hole in the base of your skull where your spine connects and you know, the vertebrae and your spinal cord goes up and there's your brain stem. It hits just right, slides between the vertebrae nearly severing the spinal cord entirely, and then up through the hole between the vertebrae and into the brain. Luckily for everybody, a lot of universes where that didn't happen. But Scarbat is just, when you're in a bad situation, IRL, you always hear about fight or flight. The most common actual reaction is to freeze. Some people freeze so hard that it takes days to leave that state. So Scarbat is in a freeze state and it takes about five or ten minutes of him underneath the corpse of the thing that almost got him before he starts with the panic but quiet, get me, get me, get this, get this thing, get this thing off, get it off, get it off, get it off. It's dead, he's not in any harm anymore. But Ilchenka has discovered the hard way that even as uh, just a magically animated pile of bones, slam one of those things into a brick wall hard enough and it doesn't work for a while. It took a while for her to be able to shake things off and get things running again and figure out and get up and go, oh my. 
And then Meliandor, of course, he couldn't help get that thing off of him because he's in his own near fugue state, locked into just bad thoughts of what if he hadn't done it? What if he hadn't done it? What if he hadn't done it? And he's just crying and wandering in this room. The three of them badly, badly, traumatically hit by this thing. They have faced death before. They have been they have walked through death's door and been amazed when they were able to come out. But never before had it been so fast, so out of control, so much just sheer bloody luck that saved them. And it hit them all like a Mack truck. So that's one of the reasons they're at the village, because they're shook. They're shook hard. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people. Not that you know, up to 25 people have left comments anywhere lately. But still, I'm going to thank up to 25 people for having left me a comment. I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm going to read them afterward. Thumbs up each one I do. Answer as many as I can. But for right now, just thank you for having left a comment, taking the time, and expending the calories. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I count American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my depression, fibro, ADHD, all these things, it's, I got troubles. I'm getting better, but one day I'm going to hit a limit. One day. We have Seamus or Seamus. I'm not sure how you would pronounce it because it really depends uh, culturally. But Seamus Williams and Confused Owl 29 thumbs up. Good to see you in the comments. And Nando Rice Cherudi, I had just been thinking about you since I've seen you on Facebook. Thumbs up and thank you. YQZXW, thumbs up. Keep my cool, greatly appreciated. It's Honda, thumbs up. I, if somebody suggests Suicide Boys, then yeah. HSM Truman, thumbs up. Fear SO2, greatly appreciated. IC Tev, thumbs up. We have Ollie B, greatly appreciated. Stinky Brick Films, greatly appreciated. Thumbs up. Good to see you in the comments. Herniner, I sure hope I'm close. Greatly appreciated. Gab Estrada, thumbs up. Johnny K, greatly appreciated. Favel, with a daily reminder to live every day to its per fullest to its purpose. Ugh. Thank you very, very much. We have Icebird6901, thumbs up. And there's Cody Flesher, thumbs up. Cr Chris, C R I S T H I A N, Zeramar, thumbs up. We have Colin Reisner, greatly appreciated. Haley Garner, thumbs up. Venom, greatly appreciated. And Ice Damon. Thumbs up and thank you, each and every one of you. Get me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people, if only in text. Greatly appreciate it, though. Definite thumbs up. And since my hands are already in the air, if you could check out, uh, if you're on PC, pointing at the text description below, but if you're on mobile, I have no idea where the text description is, but in the text description, I have things like links to my PayPal, Twitter, Patreon.com, so if you could become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. And if you'd like to help me out financially, and oh boy, I am hurting, so if you could, it would really help. If you'd like to help me out without me going, ah, if you love a Patreon.com patron, I do have a PayPal link down below where you could send money. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money, I have an Amazon wish list link as well. So if you could check those things out, do not feel, feel obligated. I do not feel entitled. And if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. If you could toss me a like, I appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. Another thumbs up. And of course, if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button, that would be very cool. Definitely a thumbs up. Well, hokey smokes. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to... I'm not going to be able to get my phone calls, man. But hopefully, I can at least try. I, I don't have my, my lowest level of support that I need. But life is life. So hopefully, I can get that done. If not, I got stuff to keep me busy. And then I can feel bad about not having getting it done over the weekend. Thumbs up for that. And of course, no matter where you are, in the United States, anywhere else in the world, no matter what, 
this virus cares not about your political affiliation or your thoughts about your freedoms. This thing just wants to live and spread. And by doing that, we get really sick and sometimes stop living. Please wear a mask when you go out among people. Socially distance for your and their safety. Try not to touch your face. Wash your hands often. Get vaxxed if you can. I'm going to get the booster as soon as it's available. Oh, gosh, now my lip is itching somewhere else. Pokey smoke. Gotta love that. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And frankly, I think that is a very good thing.